if we consider the bond that forms between calcium and sulfur, we remember from grade 9, 10 and 11 that calcium has two valence electrons, sulfur has six valence electrons and bonds form in an attempt to reach a full valence shell. So we learned that very simply an ionic bond would form between calcium and sulfur which essentially involves a transfer of electrons from calcium to the sulfur. As a result, calcium will have lost two valence electrons and therefore obtained a charge of two plus because it has lost two negatively charged electrons and sulfur has now gained two valence electrons and as a result now has a charge of two minus. And then we learned that in ionic bonds these substances stick together essentially as a result of the electrostatic force of attraction that exists between these two. This can also be seen as what's known as a redox reaction in that it is a transfer or gain or loss of electron of each atom. So we would show here that we have started with calcium and this calcium has undergone, underwent a loss of electrons that leaves it with a charge of 2 plus as it gives off those two electrons. We would call this an oxidation reaction. A oxidation reaction because it has undergone a loss of electrons. The original naming was as a result of the belief being that it only happened to oxygen, which it has obviously since been found is not the case. At the same time as this oxidation, we have another reaction taking place and that is the reaction in which sulfur is gaining two electrons to end up with this charge of two minus. As a result here, we can see that sulfur has gained electrons and we call that a reduction reaction. And there is an easy way to remember this, and that is that oxidation is loss, which we can simplify to oil, oxidation is loss, and reduction is gain, again here referring to the electrons, and that can be simplified to rig. And so the common term oil rig helps us to remember that oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. It is important to note here that these are referred to as half reactions. They are referred to as half reactions because they cannot happen in isolation. It is not possible for calcium just to lose electrons with nobody or no atom there able to gain those electrons. And so we say that oxidation requires reduction because in order for calcium to give off these two electrons, we require something, in this case, sulfur that is able to gain or accept those two electrons. So they are called half reactions because we require two of them to have a complete reaction. Another term that is important in this section is the oxidizing agent. So we know that calcium is undergoing oxidation because it loses its electrons, but it can only undergo oxidation, meaning it can only lose those electrons because sulfur is able to gain those electrons. So we say that sulfur is allowing oxidation to happen, or we say that our sulfur is the oxidizing agent. Once again, we are saying sulfur is the oxidizing agent because it is taking the electrons from calcium, which allows calcium to be oxidized. So therefore, sulfur is enabling the oxidation and therefore is the oxidizing agent. By the same reasoning, we can say that calcium is the reducing agent because in order for sulfur to be reduced, in order for sulfur to gain electrons, it is necessary for calcium to lose electrons. So we say that calcium is enabling the reduction of sulfur. So we say that calcium is the reducing agent. And so once again, 
We call these reduction oxidation half reactions because they cannot happen in isolation. You require two half reactions in order for a complete reaction to occur. And what we find is that oxidation is when something loses electrons. Oxidation is a loss of electrons. And reduction is when something gains electrons. Reduction is gained.